You're watching Rogers TV, St. John's. The lift wasn't working, and he was in pain, so I tried to lift him on my own. Yes, it's bad. I'll need help. Can I help you with that? No, I'm good. Thanks. Workplace injuries hurt the most at home. This is Oren's key tag. When you use a key tag, you protect your key. If you lose your key... The finder can call the number on the back of the tag. Or drop them in any mailbox. And the Warrants will return your keys to you. For free! Order your key tags today at warrants.ca. And make a difference in the lives of amputees, like me. Thank you. My name is Jason Piercy, and this is Out of the Fog. And on tonight's episode, we're going international, all the way to France. Well, actually, St. Pierre. And why? Hudson and Rex on City TV. And if you have not seen Hudson and Rex and you don't know what it is, well, just take a look at this. Detective Hudson, major crimes. Cause of death. Penetrating trauma to the head. He was murdered. You need to prove it. Dogs are not allowed on the auction floor. Oh, he's my emotional support dog. Yeah, I know. Can't function without him. Two cameras set three blocks apart. Spot the difference? Explain it to me like I don't. You're no fun. You're barking up the wrong tree here. No offense. You don't seem very upset. That must be the Botox. Is that supposed to be a police dog or a pussycat? Give him a try, see how that works out. Rex, go! Shot fired. We got movement! What a good boy. Oh, wait, why is he getting all the credit? What did he do that I didn't do? Doesn't that trailer get you all charged up? There's so much energy, and local people end up on that show. Did you see the lovely and talented Terry Andrews? And do you know who makes an appearance on season two? Elvis Stoiko three-time world champion Canadian male figure skater. Anyway, a whole bunch of stuff to happen on the season and a whole bunch of stuff to happen on this episode. And we'll be right back after this break. You're watching Rogers TV, St. John's. With NHL Center Ice, you get a premium ticket to the games you want every night of the season. With up to 37 out-of-market games a week to choose from, you'll get more goals, more saves, more non-stop action from the teams you love. NHL Center Ice, part of the Rogers Super Sports Pack. All this for only $35.95 a month. Order through your remote on Channel 431 or call one 8 rogers one today. And welcome back to Out of the Fog. I'm in such a great mood today. And I was also in a great mood a little while ago when I was fortunate enough to end up on the set of Hudson and Rex here in St. John's. And I got to talk to all of the cast again. These guys are all incredible. And Johnny Reardon, Detective Charlie Hudson from the SJPD, even did a shout out to my mom. Have a look at these. All right, folks. Look at this handsome specimen of a Kevin Hanchard. Uh, so, Hudson and Rex, season two, thanks for taking the time to have a chat. Uh, we've met up a couple of times before. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and we always seem to fake getting along really well for the camera. <laughs> so, I am expecting exactly that right now. Yeah, no one's going to be the wiser. Let's talk about season two yeah. itself. Yeah. 
uh, obviously, you know ahead of time, uh, to a degree, some of the stuff that's happening. Right. Uh, what are we seeing in changes in sort of the momentum of the show? Because there's, I mean, there's only so many times somebody can get murdered in St. John's. Like, the writers are getting creative, right? right? So, like, what can we be expecting? Uh, I just, I think season two is uh, a, a little bit more character driven. I mean, there's still a crime a week. That's the nature of the show. That's sort of our formula. No filler episodes. No, but uh, <laughs> but but we know a little bit more about uh, the characters as actors. The writers know a little bit more as writers, and they've given us a little bit more um, a little bit more room to play. Uh, they made the sandbox a little bit bigger for us, yeah. and given us a few more toys, and uh, and I think that's great. That's all you could ever ask for as an actor, and I think um, it, it pays off uh, tremendously for the audience. I think they yeah. they, they really get to um, have an affection and an affinity. For each of these, uh, so that, these that makes works. a lot of sense to me because, like, when they write a pilot, mm -hmm. they don't necessarily know that they're writing these boss man lines for Kevin. Mm -hmm. But now they know your style. Now Absolutely. they know stuff that works well for you. They know the engagement across the different characters and across the different performers or actors, and they're writing more for you now right. than they would have previously. Is that sort of what you mean? Yeah, and I think that's what you hope, right? Um, there comes a point when you, when you start, it, uh, start a show and you go, I don't know if he'd say this, and, or I don't know if I'd say that, or these words just don't fit in my mouth. Uh, and the writers learn that, your showrunner learns that, and they start to tailor things towards sort of your tendencies and, and your swagger or lack thereof. And, yeah. uh, and then, or lack, yeah. oh, please, or, well, you know, lack thereof. Or lack thereof. Uh, but yeah, but it, it, becomes, it becomes a little bit more of an organic process. Yeah. And, uh, and that's what the second and third and hopefully, you know, fourth, fifth, sixth seasons are all about. And uh, uh, I think right now we're settling into a real nice place, and I think uh, the audience will recognize that and really love it. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the incomparable. <laughs> Mr. John Reardon, wow. uh, Charlie Hudson, how are you, detective? Doing good, doing good. Yeah. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Um, good. They look after you so well. Your hair is perfect. Your skin is perfect. Your makeup is great. I'm sweating bullets here in this trailer, and you look like <laughs> you look like you're on vacation, and you're the one that's at work. Well, uh, why I are mean, you so handsome? Is what I'm asking. Wow, I. <laughs> Well, thank you. I mean, you're making me blush. My, my mom is probably watching, <laughs> and she's a fan. So that's oh, what that's uh, about. Yeah. Jason's mom, how are you? Her name is Agnes. Agnes? Oh, that's my, that's my grandmother's name. Is too. it really? Agnes. Probably not the same person. Your son is a lovely man. You should be very proud. Yeah, so <laughs> season two. So, I mean, you've been around uh, the acting game for a while. You've been in significant projects. It's not super common for season two to just be called out before anybody's seen season one. Yeah. So isn't that really cool? Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. That's the first time that's ever happened to me. Normally you're sitting at home after the season's aired and you're like, yeah. oh, are we going to like work again? Yeah, like, like do I, gonna... I have a job still? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we found out we barely had time to even have downtime between season one and two. Yeah. So it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was fortunate enough. Mm. As a matter of coincidence, uh, to get called in from the casting crew for Hudson Rex mm -hmm. to be in a current episode that I guess you're currently mm. in the middle of filming. French Connection. Yeah, uh, it's super cool. It was uh, a very powerful cameo. It, it, I did, <sighs> basically. It was well, but well, uh, in several in several different ways, several different sizes. That's true. Too. That's true. Yeah. That's true. The point of that mm. was to say that I got to see the work ethic that goes into, not just from the, the cast, we'll get mm -hmm. to that part, um, because you're a machine, um, <laughs> but the crew, like it's mm -hmm. long, long days. I don't know if people on the other side of this camera understand the size of a production. Yeah, it's interesting. My brother came to set with me a few years ago for the first time and, and he's like, I thought there was like 15 of you, 10, 15 of you guys in the house just, you know, shooting. And yeah. There's a hundred people, hundred plus people, and um, you know it's not uncommon to have a, you know, f from leaving your house to coming home, 16, oh, 17 yeah. hour day, yeah. and, and uh, you know doing that five, five, sometimes six times a week. So it's, yeah, it's definitely it's it's busy, and and when you're you know in the thick of it. it and that's sort of making St. John's a little more like home then. You're spending a fair bit of time here. Oh, yeah, I live here. I yeah. Guess, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, well, I'm originally from Halifax yes. and um, grew up there, so it, it feels very similar in a lot there's of similar ways. Similar places. Yeah, yeah, there's a, there's a similar vibe. People are very similar, I find, and 
uh, very friendly and welcoming, and um, and I love it here. Like I uh, I I feel very yeah at home here. And I feel that what sort of separates us from a regular mystery crime show is that this relationship between yeah. between um, you know these two partners, uh, and. Um, that has been like a huge focus of of ours since before we ever went to camera developing that bond and it's great because in the first season charlie and rex are just getting to know each other yeah. so it kind of was the same as you know john and diesel yeah and so now in second season <clears throat> we're that much more like in tune with each other yeah. so it makes sense from the evolution of the story yeah. that pairs so well with reality. Yeah. 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 And in first season, I would have to give him hand signals for him to know what I meant. And now, just from rep repetition and from, you know, working with each other, we can do a lot of things with, silently or without any hand gestures, and he just kind of knows. Yeah. And, and that, I feel, like mimics a partnership where, in, you know, out in the field... Yeah. That's what partners know. They know, okay, I, I'm doing this, and then I'm doing this, and and so it's really it's a, it's a team as opposed to some. Yes, yeah, so there's all these little analogs between what the 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 production of it looks like mm -hmm. and what it's supposed to look like from from the finished product, and yeah, the, just the energies energies are so similar. I, mm -hmm. I noticed having having been on set that um, nobody nobody needs less takes. To nail it than Diesel. <laughs> than Diesel, well, it's so true. It's kind of true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's um, he's a real pro. He really is. Yeah. Diesel also does have a bit of a public and private persona as well, which is interesting because he, um, when you are at his house or at Sherry Sherry's yeah. house, um, and see him there. He's different there than he he's is. He's not at work, right? Outside. Yeah, yeah, because he totally that's his that's his space, and he's like, hey, come in. You know, he's like, it's, he's almost more, almost more casual in a yeah. way, and more playful. And uh, you know, here, um, you know, he knows that he's working. He knows that you know it's. Um, and you're the same way. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's so yeah. hard to talk to on set. He's just like really unapproachable <laughs> and difficult, and obviously not true. Yeah. You, know, you are the nicest guy. Uh, thanks, Thank Jason. you very much. Appreciate Always it, a pleasure. Yeah. I will tell Agnes you said hi. <laughs> Take care, Agnes. Keep watching the show, please. <laughs> okay, super excited to get to hang out with my boy Justin Kelly How's again. How's it going, man? What's up, Good man? to see you. <laughs> so let, let's talk about um, one up and on to another season here. Yeah. Because yeah. you were telling me off camera that you were sure it was a miserable failure. That's not true. That's, I'm just teasing. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you should. I was throwing things. It was nuts. Um, <laughs> it's it's wild. It's you know, and it's. I mean, it's not every day that you get to do a show where you find out you're getting a second season like two months after yeah, you finish like, filming the first season. So it's it's to have that work is fantastic. Yeah, it's and like nobody's even seen it yet, and already nobody, we know we want another one. Totally, and and you know. That is definitely reassuring um, because, you know, you do this like any show you're doing the first season of a show and you're navigating it and you're trying to figure out what the tone is and what, you know, and you never really know how people are going to respond to it until they yeah. respond to it. Um, so the fact that we've gotten such a pro positive response and then enough to yeah, jump us into another another full season yeah. order is, is fantastic. And you've been a part of other projects that obviously have had their own magnitude or their own right. significance. Um, this is one of the, one of the larger ones, have, yeah. and it's becoming kind of international. Yeah, like, what yeah. What does that feel like? That's got to be weird, but also wonderful. Yeah, totally. I mean, you know, it's interesting because, you know, we're a brand new take on on an existing show, right? Yeah. So there is a sense that you know the Rex, you know, people know Rex, um, but Hudson and Rex is different, and we're we're building that from the ground up a little bit. Um, so to have that, you know reach a wide audience is, is fantastic. It's really yeah, cool. it's great. So, Sherry, Diesel, thanks for taking the time to hang out with us. Thank you for having us. Um, hard not to have you when you're talking about a show called Hudson and Rex, given that, like, this guy, who's clearly exhausted from working so hard, is the actual star of the show. He is. And one of them. One of them. That's one true. Of them. But when people line up to meet the cast, they're lining up to get their picture taken with the dog, and you know it. They 
do line up for the dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which means they actually line up for you in a way, because a lot, if not everything that he does, has a lot to do with the work that you've put in leading up till film day. Well, I appreciate that. And yeah, uh, yeah you know, it's different working with a dog. Um, you know, we do rehearsals and we do blockings and we do all these kind of things. And um, he's not there for any of that. I'm there for that. So the directors basically tell me what the dog has to do. And then I've got to figure it out in my little pea brain. Yeah. How am I going to get him to do this? And yeah. look here and go there and hit that and turn around and, you know. Um, so I have a very limited amount of time to figure out how to make him perform to what they expect. I had the pleasure uh, recently of having been an extra and having seen Diesel accomplish some tasks, mm -hmm. um, like when when we the the dinner scene or at Yellow Belly with the different wines and stuff. So I had I had the opportunity to see that happen in real time. Yeah. But more importantly, oh hey buddy, you coming to see me? <laughs> he's he's going to visit you. Yeah. <laughs> Want me to get him back up here? No, that's fine. More importantly, um, I got to see the way that you almost call an audible. Like you, you, like you talk to the director and the director knows what he wants to see uh, and then you're like, well, how can I create that? What if I did this instead? And, and I noticed a bunch of times this particular director, John Batcher, who's fantastic. Amazing, um, yeah. He, he was like, oh, that's way better. If you can do that, that'd be great. So you're impressing the people who are creating the show with your ability to create situations that they didn't even think you could do. Yeah, and you know, that's a lot of um, that's a lot of what I try and do is I try and bring those ideas forth and work with the directors and say, okay, we can do it that way, or you know this, and, and if you had a camera here and we did it yeah. here, and give them some options um, because a lot of times they don't know what the dog's capable of. Uh, you know, they don't realize that the dog can run and jump eight feet onto uh, the top of a building or something. So then they're like, okay, well, how are we going to make this? And, you know, so, yeah, it's a lot of interaction I have with the directors. And we actually uh, plan out a lot of his stunts and his uh, behaviors. Um, you know, they'll write in, the writers write in what they want. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's the director who has to portray that and they have to get that to read in the story So it makes sense and and that's where a lot of um, a, a lot of the communication comes into play so I can say well, you know He can do this or if we shoot it this way we can do this or and yeah JV is amazing. We've had some phenomenal uh, directors all right. Hi, Mako. How Hello. are you? Hello. I'm good, thank you. You have such a great smile. Always <laughs> so happy looking. Um, so, season two. Season two. Just boom, boom, out of nowhere. Just like that. Just like that. But not really out of nowhere because a lot of work goes into it and people are loving this show. That's really nice. It's so nice to hear. But it's true, you know it. No, you know, but, but, you're like, no, oh, no, but, I hadn't heard. No, but, but, but I, I don't know, it's not something like, you know, when you're busy shooting the show, you're not constantly thinking, oh, people are really digging this. You're constantly thinking, okay, we've got to make it so that That's people true. really dig this. That's you know? true, so that makes sense. It just, it's nice to be with And I guess you don't go home and watch it. No, I don't. Is that, would that be weird? Do people do, is that a thing that happens? I think it depends, I know for myself personally, I think it depends on the show. There are shows that I will not watch, there are shows that I'll watch, you know, way after the fact. Sometimes I need to know what something looks like, so I'll watch it during, but um, generally I try not yeah. to watch, yeah. Does it help with the craft? to see the finished product and then know if you would. Well, so that's the thing. Sometimes you want to know that what you're doing is translating and, and you can't quite tell, so then you watch. Yeah. But then sometimes when you watch, you just catch things that you don't like and then you mm. become self-conscious and you never want to be aware of. That's true. No, I can see that because good. like if, like even in this conversation, if I were to rewatch this interview and there was something that I did or said or I said all oh, morale too many times. Yeah. Like, you become aware of that. Exactly. And then it can go one of two ways. You can either correct that or you can get self-conscious and be worried about it yeah. and just make it that much worse. Yeah. And even if you're correcting it, it you're, you're not being natural. 
You're not being Enough yourself, authentic. right? So, so I try not to watch, at least until it's like after the fact and there's nothing I can do about it anyway. Okay, so uh, <laughs> relationships. Yeah. Let's talk about Dr. Sarah's relationship. She's got like this long distance thing going on. Like, and so does that become an issue? <laughs> well, I mean, um, um, I know there's what what is is you know we we don't write too much about what's going on back home in Toronto. I do think that long distance relationships are hard, mm -hmm. and I think with the amount that she works and am, and the amount that she's trying to put into this job and this position that she has, and you know just wanting to do well, because this is her first real kind of chance to to show herself. Um, I. Yeah, I mean, it's hard. It's hard to maintain long distance relationships yeah. like that, and it's not like she's going back and forth. She's out here, and we haven't seen him out here. So I, I, I wouldn't say too much, because I don't think there's anything you know definitive happening there. She but but you never know. You, never you really know. never know. There's also not a ton happening there, <laughs> just because there can't be. So there can't be. There's just Exa no time for exactly. It. Well, the effort that Dr. Sarah puts into her job that makes her good at it and solves these crimes miraculously every week, um, <laughs> I think that that lines up really well with the effort that Dear Mako puts into her character. <laughs> Thank you very, very much Thank for your you. time. Thanks. Always a pleasure. <laughs> Thanks. All right, girls. Uh, Mom, you said it's it again. Workplace injuries hurt the most at home. Your mouth can do a lot of amazing things. And your mouth can save a life. Hi, I'm Tom Wong. I'm just one of close to 1,000 Canadians in search of a stem cell match. We need your help. A simple swab is all you need to register on the National Stem Cell Database. You could be the one to save a life. Find the hero in you. Welcome back again to Out of the Fog. <sighs> all these people at Hudson Rex, they're all incredible, and I'm so fortunate and so grateful to be able to hang out with them. So much so that when they did this episode called French Connection, which is gonna air in November, really soon, pay attention, I actually got to visit them on set in St. Pierre, like in France. It is so cool. I, I'm really glad that I remember some of the French that I studied in high school. Right, Mom? Right, Mom? A little bit? Bon voyage. Welcome to St. Pierre, folks. We have landed, we were greeted by the mayor of this beautiful place, beautiful as you can see, and now we get to hang out with the cast and the crew of Hudson and Rex on City TV and Rogers Television. And I mean, this is gonna be great. Just look at how incredible this place is. Okay, so we got to move quickly because they're filming behind us. Mayor, Mayor Danny Breen, um, I understand that you have a shot at a cameo playing a mayor of a city in St. John's, which I know is a stretch for you. Yeah, well, you know, I, I guess it's a little bit of typecasting. <laughs> <laughs> that happens sometimes. Listen, when you're so good at a role right, yeah. and when you've been doing it for so long and when it becomes your entire shtick, nobody wants to see you in anything else. Yeah, no, no, it's a bit of fun, you know, and there's a the great crowd around now starting to 
to watch it, and uh, it's been a great day here watching the filming of this set. It's, uh, you know, these uh, these movies are tremendous for the uh, for the city and and for the province and uh, for the economy. They put a lot of economic input uh, into uh, into our communities. Absolutely. I mean, we got a crew of over 100 people. They're in town. They're I mean, they're eating there. They're sleeping there. They're spending their money there. Um, speaking of eating and spending money, uh, we're in beautiful St. Pierre. Yep. Uh, first visit? Yes, first my first time here. Yeah, coming back? Yeah, I will. Yeah, yeah, it's a great place. I've really had a chance to have a little walk around here this afternoon while the while, while some of the breaks and filming. And uh, you know, the it's it's a very uh, very quaint and very unique place. Uh, uh, I certainly want to come back and enjoy it a little bit more. It's got a good energy. It's got a good culture. A lot like St. John's. And who are you kidding? You were not walking around. I saw him at the bar the whole day, <laughs> mostly because I was with him. <laughs> not true. <laughs> not true. Not true. Not true at all. Thank you very much, Mayor Breen. Always a pleasure. Thanks very much. I go home! I go home! <laughs> break from filming and I thought I'd do a little bit of sightseeing. And I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, this is the last French colony in North America. And the reason nobody has tried to take it is because of this. Bad boy. So St. Pierre and Miquelon actually has a lot in common with St. John's in Newfoundland and Labrador. They live by the sea, they are an island, and unfortunately at times they die by the sea, just like us. Right behind me is a monument to a bunch of people lost at sea spanning from 1942 right up until an incident only 10 or 11 years ago in 2008. Our sailors lost at sea. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. Well, Rogers fans and Hudson and Rex fans, that was a whole lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. I got to go to France. I got to talk to the cast. This is a fun episode. Season two is out now. It's the show is building. It's a good show. And I know we say right here, it's on Tuesdays at eight. That's 8 Eastern, so you can watch that here locally at 9.30 on City TV, number 135 on your Rogers dial, number one in your hearts. I tried to do something cute. I don't think it landed, but that's okay. We'll see you next week. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. We got a mission. That sounds like the bad guys teaming up. Johnny just forgot. Whoa. Our ancestors came here from France to build a better life. We lived here happily for generations 